I was relatively new to recruitment a few years ago and in trying to understand what the best practices were out there I went around did a little bit of benchmarking and then in conversation with one of our suppliers uh, a person called Joy Redmond she was on the phone and, and said oh next time you organize a best practices conference let us know and I said but we don't do that and actually thinking about it, I thought, but that's a great idea, let's do it. So, so we did, and that was born, well, there was born CRSS V1, and now we're on version two, and uh, another fantastic success. One of the things I think we can almost guarantee is that recruitment in sort of five, ten years is going to look very, very different from what it is now and certainly sort of five, ten years ago. Um, that's going to be mainly enabled by technology. Uh, but my big hope as well is that we also become more strategic. We become more focused on what we need to do. Uh, we become more tailored to our own business strategies uh, and we use technology to support that. Uh, so I think the, uh, the future is going to be very interesting. Oh, well, I, I can definitely say that much. Today I'm presenting Breaking Convention in Recruitment, which is the journey that we've gone through to create solutions for our resourcing challenges. It's a topic I'm particularly passionate about, and it was a topic that um, I think uh, could interest the, the, the audience because we've had to do things very differently because of the scale and the challenges of the organisation and the sheer depth of the, um, the, the services we provide and the, the territories we provide them in. I would hope that resourcing evolves to continue to bring additional sourcing channels, methodologies and processes in and integrate them together. There's a lot of people that talk about individual strands of attraction and, uh, and technology, um, but I come from a, um, a direction where I think everything is viable and you should use all different uh, types of ways and methodologies to do things um, as an integrated approach to, to resourcing. My presentation today was about the impact that passive recruiting is having on HR practices and this is something that's very near to my heart because I think that with the advent of passive recruiting and the way that recruiters can reach talent and, and candidates who aren't looking for a new job is really going to change how that employee engagement is with the employer and this is a critical place that HR can play and so recruiting is already rapidly changing. I think that my topic was starting to try to inspire HR practitioners to also start thinking differently about how we engage with employees. I think that recruiting and sourcing is going to continue to evolve, really focusing on attracting talent um, who has the exact right skills right now and those people will not be looking for jobs. So I think that more and more employers will start taking on passive recruiting um, activities such as using tools like LinkedIn to actually reach out to those candidates directly. I think it will also impact talent brand campaigns across social media and other avenues that maybe traditionally companies weren't even thinking of. I think that's an exciting place and from there it all becomes around the candidate experience. How do those candidates become brand ambassadors even when they aren't successful with your company? Um, so that's where I see a lot of things going to be changing. It's much more than a conference. It's much more than just sitting around a, a table and discussing and, and and listening. It's an opportunity to visit CERN, to see the birthplace of the web, to see the LHC and we were very privileged. We had three of CERN's best guides taking them round, a group one group in French, two groups in, in English and really showing them what CERN's about, how CERN works and you know how CERN as an organization is actually pushing forward the frontiers of, of humankind's knowledge. Funny photo, yeah, this uh, announced at the morning that we're going to have a helicopter in, in the sky. Um, thanks to Michelle for the organization there and Waspview, we had this drone that went up some 30, 40 meters and took an aerial photograph of all of the participants. I think we must have had half of CERN watching from the restaurant there. And we're going to talk about the digital journey that Guardian Jobs has gone on from um, back 15 years ago when we were almost just a print title all the way through to a sort of modern digital and mobile provider now. Just because I thought it would be quite fascinating to pe for people to see how in such a short space of time we've transformed our, our business, as I said, from a newspaper to um, a website who, which uses data and targeting to a much, to a much greater extent.
Expectations for today, well, we at The Guardian know quite a lot about social media and data, but um, we're very interested to see what the, um, the perspectives from other job sites and even from the people at CERN about ha how they use uh, data um, to get good, good results for whatever their business is. Expectations for today, I'm extremely excited. We're at the uh, beautiful country in a beautiful city at the, uh, the home of the web. My expectations are very big because I was here in 2011 and it was fantastic, amazing speakers, um, really excited to hear what all the organisations are doing um, and there was a lot of sharing the last time and I expect um, similar if not more, so really excited to hear what people are, are doing and, and learn from them, so yes, it's, uh, it's great to be here. Katie McNabb from PepsiCo brings a great story because whereas most people talk about the successes and what works and bask in the glory, she's turned that upside down and talking about the challenges and what isn't working and how to standardise and how to address those issues. And I think we can all empathise with a lot of the challenges that she's facing. A big focus on back to basics and although that sounds basics, I think it's one of the presentations we've got the most to learn from. So having Manuel Monge there from Nestle, who actually came in from his holidays specifically to give this talk, Nestle is a fantastic giant behind numerous brands and they're the challenge is to achieve consistency across a very decentralized process. So I think there's some real insights into how to do this on a, such a global organization. Yeah, not to mention yours as well. I mean, you were really sharing with us our experience at CERN and I think people out there really appreciated what you had to say because CERN is an institute that's quite unusual. Well, I think we've got a, a great story to tell. That's why for me it's always a pleasure to tell our story. Uh, I called it the LHC, the Large Hiring Challenge, but it could have been called the Fantastic Journey as well. You know, in a few years we've we've really done a lot in the recruitment process there. There's a lot that I'm proud of, and there's still a lot of challenges ahead. Hence the reason of, of sharing how we can uh, attack these challenges at the seminar. I think that uh, we need to engage much earlier in the process. Um, we are still working too much in a reactive mode and I think uh, uh, it's really critical that we engage much earlier than uh, the moment where we have an actually job requisition. Um, and when I say engage, I really want to, to underline I mean it. it it's not uh, a one-way conversation and one-way communication, it's an exchange. And today we have so many tools that allow us to do it and really to engage with those passive candidates because we see that more and more um, the market is tight, people are not really secure, so they don't feel secure, they don't move, so we need to go and reach out to them. So I think a way to do it is really engage as early enough and to know where our top talents are. Uh, people stop talking about social recruitment and people just talk about attraction. People focus hopefully a little bit more about their employees and how their employees are engaging with each other and how their employees are able to use their social networks to generate more referrals and employee relationships. So I think there'll be a bit of a change from it being social recruiting to more about engagement and rather it being a fixed position of just recruitment to be a an ongoing process of engagement. I came this morning with different sort of um, uh, expectations and curiosity, uh, but if it's something that I've taken away, it's that we have a great technology. Uh, in the last few years we talked a lot about technology in recruitment, but I think this afternoon I started really to be more conscious that, uh, or remember myself, that we are working with people. So it's great to have the technology, but we may have to revisit the way we use technology. For example, as we were saying earlier, for the candidate experience. So it's great to have applicant tracking uh, uh, systems, but when an applicant will apply and, uh, and they even don't know to whom they apply and they will receive an anonymous answer, I don't think this is a good candidate experience. We're dealing with people, we're part of human resources, so we need perhaps to change the way we, we use the technology. And definitely I think the, uh, uh, the a very big moment that I had today, it was um, the presentation of Robert, of course, um, and I think I kept on thinking the old day of the final question of, of his presentation that was, uh, do we really understand what's going on? Do we understand? And that stayed with me for the old day. More of Robert Kalu saying that Facebook and, and iPhone are, are, are evils is probably going to be the highlight. Um, 
I think people have really developed to really understand what they're doing now. You know, so it'd be quite interesting to see what Guardian are going to talk about, what G4S are going to talk about. They're both clients of ours, so it's quite nice to see them talking. Um, and the expectations is just going to be more people understanding their job, which is quite good. Well, a key message I took is that Robert will not be joining LinkedIn, uh, despite the fact that I gave him a pen. Um, but what I found really wonderful was the collaboration that I saw. And I think that in recruiting, you know, it is evolving and changing. And I do believe that we need to collaborate because it will inspire each other to enhance our practices and also um, think differently about how we're approaching our own difficult problems to solve. And so really it was, it was less about the the actual tactics of recruiting, it was more about the collaboration and innovation that I saw happening. I think that we are moving from uh, static talent pools that we, tr we were trying to catch within ATSs uh, until now, until, uh, into, into very um, alive communities. And that's the beauty of social media, of new technologies, of mobile. Uh, but that's also the new challenge of community management. We will be able to talk to the right people, but they will have to be entertained with the right content, with the right interest, and building this bridge of, bridge of trust. Um, and another dimension I've really seen, and that uh, students and graduates have been asking for this year, is actually a matching dimension. They need to be inspired because uh, they are for too long studying without having a real professional career related to it and they really want to know what kind of job they could be made for. So it's taking a bit of um, altruism from companies because they're going to have to teach that even to candidates that they will never recruit. So open your mind and take time to, to coach about your professions and your skills. A lot of people talk about social media and the strategy for social media as if it's a talent acquisition strategy. For me an important message is the use, you can have a strategy for the use of social media but using social media in itself isn't a talent acquisition strategy. We've got 25 million unemployed in Europe today, we've got 4 million unfilled job positions and both of those numbers are rising and I think people need to take a step back and think where are we getting the talent from and how are we helping produce the talent that are going to help solve those problems. So what do you reckon? Should we do another CRSS? This already set the standards really high but the expectations are out there now for another one and I think every time we do it we learn a lot so it's a definite yes. Definite yes, looking forward to it. And thank you for your participation to all of the speakers, all of the people who attended, the webcasts, the people on the tweets, our whole team for making this happen. It was a fantastic day and we hope we can rely on you to come back and make the third one even better.